Hey all, welcome back to a new episode of Station Focus, where today we'll be journeying farther into the suburbs of the Greater Toronto area than we've been in some time, to visit Burlington Station, which serves the city of the same name at the westernmost end of Lake Ontario. The station is served by the Lakeshore West GO Line, and was historically the western terminus of the line until it was extended to Hamilton and beyond. Nowadays, it enjoys all-day frequent service up to 30 minutes from peak to peak, and has recently, as of 2017, gone through a transformation that really brought the station to the next level. Let's head over there and take a look. Located about an hour away on the GO train from Toronto's Union Station, on a local service, Burlington will be the western terminus of the corridor's frequent electrified trains. The station enjoys good ridership, which seems to have been revived lately, as we see lots of passengers passing through the station. We're starting our tour of Burlington Station today at the platforms. Stepping off a train from Union, we're greeted with the northern side platform at the station. Both platforms here are mostly weather protected, with glass shelters and vertical access points all along the platforms, although this platform does have a few stretches without a roof overhead, as it's not up against the main station building. The platform we're standing on is technically an island platform, just like its sibling to the south, but the northernmost track is no longer in use, and its half of the platform has been fenced off, though with more frequent electrified service coming, I'm guessing it'll come back into use. Overall, there's plenty of space for passengers to wait, and the station is maintained quite nicely compared to some other GO stations. Burlington has quite a unique layout in that both the north and south platforms have some important pieces of station infrastructure attached to them, so let's take a look at the amenities on this end of the station first. This giant parkade was added to the station in 2008 and has four levels of parking, complete with a giant surface lot on the other side of the building, as well as a pedestrian bridge to connect both platforms to the parkade. We all know how I feel about parkades, but this is definitely quite a suburban station and a large transportation hub for the surrounding area, and it does have some local transit connections, so this parkade is slightly less egregious. The parking spot occupied lights are also a nice touch. Aside from the parkade, there's also a small station building here, as well as a bus loop for Burlington Transit, even though it seems to be out of service right now. This north station building is actually quite spacious, with lots of amenities such as benches, TV screens, vending machines, and a payphone, but it's unfortunately not seeing a lot of use besides the occasional passers-by walking through to get to the parking garage. As for the pedestrian bridge, it's accessible from the third floor of the parking garage, and it's actually not too bad of a place to do some rail fanning. Coming out of the other end of the bridge, we arrive at the large southern platform of the station. This island platform is used by trains heading towards Union, and features mostly the same amenities as the other platform we were just on. Since there's tracks separating the platform and the southern station building, we need yet another different method of connection, which is present as a pedestrian tunnel underneath the platforms, similar to other GO stations. I'm especially loving the lime green color scheme here, although there is a lot of concrete, the bright color does make this space look a bit nicer. This station is fully accessible, and you'll be able to find elevators taking you to both platforms in the tunnel, as well as the south station building, where we'll be heading next. This bright and spacious curved station building was inaugurated in 2017 and has really become the main station building where passengers can wait for their bus or train, or just spend some time to take a breath during their long commute. I especially enjoyed the ceiling to floor glass windows letting in some beautiful natural light which goes perfectly with the wooden accents on the roof. Amenities here are quite a complete set. 
The station building hosts a large service counter, numerous presto ticket machines, a washroom, and uniquely even a local coffee shop for passengers to get their daily caffeine fix. At each end of the station building are large waiting rooms where you can stretch your legs out and relax, and there's also a Purolator drop-off kiosk here. Sorry FedEx users. Cradle at the center of the arc-shaped station building is the station bus loop, where you'll be able to catch a go bus to Niagara Falls, a prime destination for a long weekend like the one where we came here to film. There's also Burlington Transit bus service, including some late night routes as well. Besides the bus loop, you'll also be able to find another, albeit smaller parking lot and some bike parking infrastructure. In the distance, not far from the station, is a new condo complex. A transit-oriented development like at this station so far from downtown Toronto is a bit surprising, but a very good sight to see, and hopefully a sign of what's to come at other suburban stations as well. This is perhaps the most notable TOD at a suburban GO station yet, though several more are coming at sites like Mimico. Alright, so that's today's tour of Burlington Station. It's time to take a train back to Union Station, which looks like it'll be quite busy given the waiting passengers here on the platform. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.